so tired of being. Jim's dead. Suppressed by all my childish fears. He's rotten in a box. I wish that you would trust me. Soon he'll be a skeleton. So he'll be dust. Beyond that, he'll just become a forgotten memory. But he'll always be remembered by one person and one person alone. To the end of time. Because all of these new fact pretenders. The gym skinwalkers, the gym personators, none of them hold a candle to whom we're gonna give light analysis to tonight. None of them hold a candle to the eldest of old facts, Shannon Gaines, a man who's been trying to wear gym skin for a good 10 years before the man died. And now I'm already getting a bro. Can you not? Can you not? Well, let's do this, shall we? I'm gonna talk you through the journey that Jim's on now. This is Jim's journey. Are we ready? The first stage of human decomposition is called autolysis, or self-digestion, and begins immediately after death. Shall we do stage two? Stage two, blow. It consists of bloating to the body. Leaked enzymes from the first stage begin producing many gases. Due to the gases, the human body can double in size, giving it a bloated look. Stage three. Stage three, active decay, Jim's journey. Fluids realized through orifices indicate the beginning of the active decay. Bones, cartilage, and other byproducts of decay remain. The cadaver loses most mass during this stage. Jim's journey. Stage four. Skeletonization. Because the skeleton has a decomposition rate based on the loss of organic matter. There is no time frame for when skeletonization occurs. Bro! Bro! Can we not? Can we not? This one's a really good one, by the way. All right, so today we're talking about Shannon Gaines, the Gator Gamer. A man who's literally been expecting and looking forward to Jim's death for about 10 years, if not longer. He calls himself Jim's number one fan. A man who quite sickeningly has copied all of Jim's mannerisms. The laugh. Everything else, which we'll get into in a moment. But he will sit there and say that this is in bad taste. This is in bad taste to Daddy Jim. <laughs> For a lot of you, this has been a long time coming. Shannon Gaines is comeuppance. And that's what this is. This is a comeuppance for Shannon. Because we're going to cover all of his sins. Everything the man did. Everything he's doing now. And how he expects to be the inheritor to Jim's legacy. He deserves it. 
He's the oldest of all of the skinwalkers. He's going to snatch that crown. And the way he's going to do it is by sweeping up for everyone else who's snatching the crown currently. And then snaking on them at the later day. And standing on the, the dead snake mountain. It's going to be a hollow victory for Shannon Gaines. By the time Shannon does become Jim, Jim will be on skeletonization. He'll just be a dust. He'll be dust in a box. Likely there won't even be a box left because the earth will have exploded. Heat death or some shit. Shannon Gaines. Um, with Shannon, TLDR. This was Ethan Ralph's sidekick. A man who stood loyal to his man for nigh on a decade. The only reason Shannon snaked, for real, is because Jim told him to. And because Shannon ain't got no original thought. Shannon ain't got a brain in his mind. Shannon decided to snake on Ethan Ralph. In my opinion... Shannon should have just stayed loyal because he had nothing. He had no talent. He had no charisma. He had no ability to go solo. But also, the question I asked at the time was, wait a minute, buddy. Ethan Ralph's just had a crazy, crazy, crazy year. In fact, before that, he'd had another crazy, crazy, crazy year. And Gator stood by his man the whole time. Throughout all of it, worse as shit than Ralph flagging down tea clips, which was the reason why Gator Snaked occurred in the two years prior. A fucking sex tape. Stories about the man hanging his dog, putting poppies in... You know, even if half of it was true, for a moral man like Gator... You'd have thought he'd have snaked sooner. Alas. Alas. But he snaked because Daddy Jim told him to snake. Because Daddy Jim gave him the A-OK -okay to snake. There's nothing I despise more, ladies and gentlemen, than a traitor. Than someone who's just going to up sticks, try and come to the other side. Not because of their own forming of an argument in their own minds, but because their internet daddy told them it was not okay, not okay to hang out and sweep up anymore for Ethan Ralph. But when he defected to the other side, he was met with open arms by the Kino Casino crowd, by the Warskies of the world, by every one of Ralph's former associates that also snake. And because he'd shielded himself, no one was allowed to do this very show. No one was allowed to do this very thing, where we show you, the world, just whom Shannon Gaines is. Just whom the man is. It was all supposed to have been swept up, literally. This was a sweet stream, a stream? A stream that was swept by Shannon. And he did his best behind the scenes to sweep this one up. You better believe it. But I can't be swept, Shannon. I'm your final boss. Buddy. So I want to introduce you to just who Shannon is and his status amongst the panoply of gym personators. Tell me if this looks familiar, huh? There he is, look. It's gator time. It's gator time. And there he is dressed like Jim. Except it's not Jim. It's a man pretending to be an alligator. When we, when we look at the man pretending to be an alligator and who he actually is, you'll be thinking, what the fuck's he playing at? Surely this man's taking the piss, isn't he? But this is an alligator. This is Chad. This is Jim's successor. The oldest of all of them. And also the most experienced Jim personator. I want to take you to one of the Gator times. Uh, not this one. In fact, fuck it. Let's go with this one. Look, it's Gator time. I'm ready. And in all of its lifetime, in all of its lifetime, three years, 
Three years this has been active on the internet. Gator. A man who would have gone alone. Jim's successor. He didn't need Ralph to be in any way relevant in any shape or form. Three years later, Gator Times got 300 views. It's tough, Shannon. It's tough. Yeah, it's the same shit generic intro that all of the other Jim Walkers have. No artfully chosen music relevant to the theme of the A-logging subject. No. Listen to it. Shall we jump into the stream itself? The air to Jim. Yeah, the message, Metal Gear Solid 2 got so weird. But that's why I love it. Metal Gear Solid 2 predicted literally every... Yeah, Scratch Point said it. Metal Gear Solid 2 predicted literally everything that's happened so far. It's crazy. The GW system is the key to their supremacy. He was going to make it big streaming Metal Gear Solid 2. That's what he was going to do. Gator's side hustle whilst he was sweeping it for Ralph. But not only sweeping it for Ralph, but also sweeping it for Masterson, Ricator. All of them he swept it for. No distinction, but he was most loyal to Ethan Ralph. But what about the true show? When he realised that no one give a fuck about him streaming Metal Gear Solid 2, what did Gator decide to do? Well, he decided to do his own version of the kill stream. It was called, and it's actually laced with adverts. That's shameful, Gator. By the way, 1,000 views, three years. Hey, everybody. It's me, Gator. It's Gator. It's Gator. How are you guys doing tonight? Welcome to Gator time. Listen to how he copies the man's cadence. This is a gym impersonation from at least three years ago. But it's a gym impersonation that he's perfected over a decade. Listen to his voice. Shameful. Hey, everybody. It's me, Gator. Uh, it's Gator. It's Gator. How are you guys doing tonight? Welcome to Gator Time, the truth is out there edition. I Look at how he puts himself at the head of the table. The head of the table. And he's joined by a panoply of no mark guests. There's Joaquin, Leo. Don't die. Don't have an aneurysm. But there's Joaquin. But there he is, head of the table. And look. You can keep up with Gator. In fact, we'll have to show you. By my co-host Flamenco and a little bit you can keep up with Gator at GatorTime at WordPress.com. You can listen to his insane ramblings, which we'll get into in a moment. But look at it, look at him, Gator. Jim and person. This is a proto. This is like a prehistoric Jim and person. He was the original, the progenitor of all of the Jim Skinwalkers we're seeing today. And in fact, I'm pretty sure that most of them are trying to copy Shannon. Because none of them seem to get Jim right, but they absolutely get Shannon right. Down to the degeneracy also. But listen to him go. Bit of a surprise co-host that the legendary blast from the past, Joaquim. How are you doing, Joaquim? What a past shit. I've only been around for like, I don't even know, a year. Well, that is the past of Gator. Gator's also been around for a year, but he lops as an old fag. What? He's the, it's the legendary streamer from back in the past. Joaquin goes, I've only been around for a year. Gator goes, that's just how long I've been around also, really. But I lop and pretend to be something greater than I am. When in actual fact, I'm just a spare banana. A little janitor. Someone who sweeps it up for their lord and master. Sad. I'm already old news. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But anyway, um, yeah, did you want to tell the folks about how we got this program started and where all the funding for it came? Uh, I think I'll go ahead and leave that up to you. Okay, so this is something... What a pussy. That indicates a lack of research, Gator. So as you can see, Gator didn't have what it took. 
to even try and do a diet kill stream where he's got literal no-name guests. Who gives a fuck? But there he is presenting himself at the head of the table and it's gator time. It's always gator time. Proto Jim Personator. Now, for a long time, Shannon thought he was the king. For a long, long time, Shannon Gaines thought he was king of shit mountain. But don't take my word for it. You've got to listen to his words in just a moment. You've got to listen to how he used to lord it over us. How he used to pretend that he was this great man. A real king. And we were just insignificant insects. In the gutter there. Criticising his mensch. Going after his daddy Jim. Shannon Gaines. Used to look down on us. Meanwhile. As he's looking down on us. I've got a song lined up. Let's do the song. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Are you? Meanwhile, as Shannon Gaines is looking down on us. This is what he's doing in his spare time. There he is. Shannon Gaines. This is your brain on Jim. You might be thinking, what's that a still from? What's that about? Where's he found that one? This is record of one Do you see that, Shannon? I've got everything. I've got your whole past. What about... <laughs> what about this one, Shannon? What about this one? <laughs> this is almost too much. I'm going to save this one for later because it's just too gold. But there's so much here, Shannon. You won't believe. You will not believe what this man swept up when he snaked. But look, there he is, talking shit. Gay Ops Winston, too much of a pussy. This one. Ralph has a fiscal responsibility to patrons. This was when, by the way... Ralph flagged down a stream because it had some paywall content on. What about this one? There he is licking my balls. Don't come at me. But, oh, he's got a trust fund. Ignore the truth. The man's saying it's got a trust fund. He's a baronet. Bro, can we not? You don't think I've got it all? From Geek to Chic by Shannon Gaines. I was used to getting picked on in school for the things I liked. I was what most modern people would consider a geek. I went to school for being a complete bugman. Wearing the regalia of a bugman. The popular kids at school liked to make fun of the fact that I liked anime. They consistently made my life absolute hell. Every chance they could. 
We're going to go into the man's soul. You've got to understand why he tries to be Jim in this one line alone. Are you ready? I tried to get into the stuff that the popular kids liked and found that I just didn't really fit in with them. Moreover, they saw right through my ruse. And it made them dislike me even more. Tip of the iceberg, that one. <laughs> I was told, by the way, I was told that PPP had the opportunity to drop the Brian, the, <clears throat> the Shannon Gaines bomb the moment he defected and came onto the KC and turned co. I was told that PPP had this in front of him and he could have dropped this nuke at any point in time. So why didn't it happen? Why didn't it happen, ladies and gentlemen? Why wasn't Shannon's past fully exposed into the light? Um, we're going to get into Shannon's words. How much of a big man Shannon used to think he was and still thinks he is. Because he thinks that all this has been swept up. He thinks he can just carry on with impunity. We're going to get into just exactly whom Shannon Gaines thought he was. And you're going to hear... A very, very, very good gym impression. The man has studied the whole thing. I want to start with this one because it made me laugh. <laughs> You're going to see a common theme whenever Shannon addresses any criticism of him or whomever his lord and master is that week. You're going to see that common theme being that they're all jealous. They're all jealous of Shannon. They're all jealous of Shannon. Everyone's just jealous of Shannon Gaines. So shall we get right into this first one? This is how I'm painting a picture. I'm weaving a tapestry. This is how the man used to compose himself and still does. But go ahead, explain why he might have some enmity towards you. Well... King of Pole has always wanted to be, like, somebody's Me. second in command. And one of the things, one of the reasons that he fucking hates me is because I ended up becoming your co-host on the kill stream. He, he specifically, when you came back and started doing streams again, he buried the hatchet with you very publicly and was trying to work his way into becoming... Uh, you know, the official co-host of the show. He wanted he wanted that spot, and he never got it. And so he went to the Kumite, he tried to become co-host on the Kumite, but what ended up happening is he is so fucking obnoxious that failure got super fucking drunk and destroyed his keyboard live on air because he just couldn't stand king of poles spurting spaghetti i remember those watching legendary that. fucking moments of that show i remember watching that live and the thing about it is that wasn't even a kumite ralph by the way is that. fucking hammered in this one uh and but i do remember watching that at least i don't think it was but <laughs> I, I do remember watching that except i don't know yeah, i think I mean, so everybody was all there but yeah I... hi to 2020 this this is when ralph was coming off his pill streams and shit like this the whole point isn't to say that, oh, look, there's, there's Shannon Gaines attacking Brian. No. I want to demonstrate a pattern of behavior. A pattern of cowardly behavior. Because, <laughs> which one do we do? This one? No, we have to save that one for a moment. I want to talk to you and show you just how That's not the it one. Feels like... I know most of these by memory, but that's not the one we need to show to demonstrate the pattern of behavior, to show you exactly how he thinks that everyone who's ever come at him is jealous of the man. Here we go. Well, it's about posturing. 
Um, and I imagine part of it is the fact that he's got a weird obsession with me, PPP does. And I don't know whether it's he's jealous because he called in to Ralph's show forever ago. Everyone's jealous of Brian. Uh, Shannon Gaines. And it didn't take off and Ralph dropped him. And so he's had this like weird sort of jealousy thing going with me. I told a story back on the uh, Killstream Forever. I think it was Dick Masterson's first episode on there about a girlfriend I had. I think PPB was trying to like. We're getting into the girlfriend this story by the way. to like dunk on me or something. It was very weird, <laughs> honestly. Okay. So there he is. There's two Christ there, at least, of people. I was jealous of Shannon, me. apparently, at one point in time. Because Shannon was on a show with Jim. I've been on shows with Jim, Shannon. There's no Medal of Honor in it. The man's literally dying. And dead. Stage four. But everyone was jealous of Shannon Gaines back in the day. And what you've just heard there is the man saying, really tearing into PPP, giving a motivation for PPP's psyche, his diagnosis, really talking smack on my good friend PPP. Now, when Shannon defected and went on the Kino Casino, this happened. Now listen no. to the man's lies. I've always been no. I've always been I've always been complimentary of PPP, if you've ever noticed. You have been, and that would make Ralph see. Remember you're like he would get mad about it. You were like, Yeah, you know, he makes fun of me and shit, but he's pretty funny and then he's like Ralph's like Yes he was. No, nope, was not me. Liar. Exactly. Not sure. Gators fucking lies. We'll do this one again. Because as PPP is doing this show, he has everything that I have on this show. The Shannon Gaines bomb. Ready to go. But he's got the man literally saying this. Lying to his face. And I want you to watch PPP's face. As he just hears this barefaced lie. You have been, and that would make Ralph see. The guy just goes, look. He would get mad about it. PPP just goes. He's pretty funny, and then Ralph's like, yeah. Well, were you the one who flagged down the Aqualad video I did about you, Gator, or? Nope, was not me. Liar. Why did that one go? Liar. The ones about Ralph stayed up, so. Not sure. Now, PPP back in the day made a legendary video where he was shitting on his toilet, cutting a promo on Gator, saying he wasn't, he wasn't Batman's sidekick. He wasn't Superman's sidekick. He wasn't Iron Man's sidekick. He wasn't one of the cool superhero sidekicks. He was Ethan Ralph's sidekick. The equivalent of Aquaman's sidekick. It was a pretty good video. And it actually got, I think it got PPP's channel taken down and I had to give him my channel. Because Shannon flagged the one, one video. It's thousands of targets, but Shannon couldn't take it. He couldn't take it. But there he was, trying to be everyone's friend when he snaked. Trying to deny his crimes. Literally, trying to deny his own fucking crimes. And that's the worst part of all of this. But we'll listen to more of it when he's snapped. No. I've always been I've always been complimentary about uh, PPP, if you've ever noticed. Did, well, did the Aqualad video I did about I did about here or Nope, was not me. Why did why did that one go down and all the, the ones about Ralph stayed up though? Not sure. Yeah, I thought you were funnier. <laughs> I thought you won. And I, I thought you were out here and how you did it. That's really all that matters. Mask off. You heard there him impersonating Jim's laugh, but revealing the own Joker laugh that he has just behind that mask. True sh We're getting into everything, Shannon, so, so don't... Have no reservations. This is a no-half-measures one.
Listen to how puffed up the man used to get. Listen to just how he used to talk shit. Are you ready? And this is also an insight into how he used to sweep for his lord and master. I connect you, man. You can't they afford, pull... God damn it! They pulled out all the stops tonight, too. They were making threats in what? chat. Did they even DDoS they... Chat. Like, I'm not they kidding. DDoS really entropy. Happened. They've... When, when, who has the ability to DDoS entropy, guys? He's talking about me and PPP. I think Gates is DDoSing this one, to be honest. They tried to get the DDoS entropy. They've been flagging the streams from start to finish. They. I think Gates is in the machine. I'm trying to get it to stop. It was complete total mask off moment. They were they tried to get their bots to downvote, but the kill stream audience is just that much better. They pulled their mask off in an attempt to try to stop. Once and for all, and they couldn't fucking do it. And they exposed themselves yet again. They don't have a single moral ground to stand on after tonight. They tried it. They failed. You fucked up. No one gives a shit what happens to y'all's dumb gay message boards from here on out. You got exposed. The nose was exposed. Eat shit. Big talk from a big man, Gator. Big talk from a big man. Laying down the smack. Laying down the smack. I mean, did you not think it would all come out, buddy? Did you not think... <laughs> did you not think stuff like when this advert stops? Did you not think stuff like this would out, bro? There you are, man. Bro. Looking like a James Bond supervillain. It's Sipa. Got weird Kim Jong Un vibes going on there. Weird ass motherfucker, that's all I can say. But there's more. There's a great deal more. This is a man who used to scream he would drink my blood. This is a man. Who said, I, I'll kill you. You come round here, I'll murder you. He thought he was the Dark Lord of the Internet. And once upon a time, all we had to go off were these eyes. These fucked eyes. But... <laughs> Shall we just do the videos? There's such a great wealth here, of which to go over. What I do want to show you though, when Gator stops so, talking. With the internet and access to all this information. There's seven oh! Gator clips the playing at once. What I do want to show you, though, is just how the man used to conduct himself in public. Because whilst he was talking smack, he was going out in public like this. That's what he was doing. Where is he off to? Where, where is he going? Where is he going? Is he going to get a degree? Is he going to graduate? No. Is he going to react to Jim's death? 
No, no. Wh wh where is the man going? Wh wh where's he off to on his travels here? Where it, just where in the world is Shannon Gaines going? Shannon Gaines is on his way to a gym convention or some weird convention of YouTubers where he literally dresses as Jim. This is Shannon Gaines in a gym cosplay. Literal skinwalker tear. Norman Bates, eat your fucking heart out. Surely this isn't Shannon. Surely not. It's Shannon. There he is, with his four-star hat, looking like a pedophile. This man wears the skin. Literally. Look at him. Fucking shameless. Truly, truly shameless. And what's he doing at these conventions when he goes to them dressing as Jim? What's he doing at these conventions? Witness this in full. His record of Lodos War. That's D Lit and that's Parn. This is like one of my favorite animes of all time. Oh. Okay. Dina is like my first wife. <laughs> that's why I like Elf Chick so much. He's pointing at murals of anime and saying, This was my first waifu. The lady holding the camera is like, whoa, okay. Uh, is this guy gonna rape me in a moment? But, but look at his face as he stares at this mural of his waifu. Look at him stare at this mural of his waifu. I mean, this is his waifu, by the way. Fragmenko tier child. Like, how do you, how do you explain this? This is his first waifu. And the love is still strong. The love is... It's an infant. That's an infant. Ethan, Ralph, Jim. They weren't Gator's first loves. It was this literal child. But listen to him. This is Record of Lodos War. That's d and that's Parn. This is like one of my favorite animes of all time. Oh, okay. Jimmy is like my first wife. Look at him point at the infant. That's why I like elf chicks so much. Sick fuck. Sick, sick, sick fuck. But this man used to LARP as an alpha. This man. <laughs> Listen to him go. Ralph's very shitted during this point in the story. The fights, you know, we still know Tim Loy uh, down in oh, Knoxville. We oh, can go down God. there and own Knoxville and we can have a good time. <laughs> and I'm down for it. I'm down for it. I don't know what everybody else is, but I'm down for it. Many of you picked up on the fact that whenever Gator used to talk on Ralph's show, Crickets, deafening silence. The guy would be rehearsing his smack. He'd be writing down his scorched earth promos. None of them would land. None of his punches could cut the mustard. But he was given, I don't know, airplay. Because uh, <coughs> he was a talent. He was able to do the OBS. Right. You might also remember, I'm going to get into some lore here that a few of you have forgotten about. Because 
Let, in fact, let's let's do this. Plate gang. Plate gang. Plate gang used to dox people for Ethan Ruff. They used to do so uh, through the cipher, through the command of Gator. Any one of Ralph's enemies that were A-log in the kill screen, Gator would send Plate Gang to go and destroy. I don't know about this current version of Plate Gang, but back then, around Knoxville, if not before, that's what was happening. And you want to hear the man's thoughts on what doxing is? Because you heard how he didn't like, you, you might have heard how, uh, I can't believe they doxed Jim. Josh is a faggot for hosting Jim's docs on Kiwi Farms. All of the image boards are faggots for doxing his internet daddy. Do you want to hear Gator's thoughts on doxing? Do you want to, you want to hear his true thoughts on doxing when he was in the mix sending Plate Gang to do his bidding? You ready? Because I'm ready. Here he is. Doxing is a tool. Like any other tool, it can be used for good, and it can be used for awesome. Do you want to hear that one again? Doxing is a tool. Like any other tool, it can be used for good, and it can be used for awesome. Oh, no, no, no! Gator, no! It can be used for good. It can be used for awesome. It was okay for everyone else, but it wasn't okay for Daddy Jim. Hi, I'm Brian Holloman, and I worked on the Miss and Mysteries movie. Um, That's how the man sounds when he stopped trying to impersonate Jim. Sounds like Kermit the fucking Frog. Listen to his voice. Hi, I'm Brian Holloman, and I worked on the Miss and Mysteries movie um, based around uh, Slenderman. Um, you know, for the for the contest, and you know, one thing people might wonder is, you know, sort of that's fucked, isn't it? Sh do, do you want to hear? It? So, so his this is his voice when he's doing his show, when he's doing Gator Time. Chat. Oh, in fact, let's do a recent one when he's doing his Anime Boomers podcast. That no one gives. It. Look at how badass he is. This is his intro music. It's the Anime Boomers Podcast, brought to you by Weeaboo Energy. There he is, look. Boring shit. No, never I watched it, it. never really interesting. I have also, I have never watched, yeah. I've, I've Playing seen so second banana to these faggots. Show. Like, halfway between what technicals do, like, it would just be kind. Let me go ahead and introduce Spooky. How are you doing, Spooky? I know that was terrible. And welcome to the Anime Boomer Podcast. Listen to his voice, the gym impersonation he puts on when he's on the internet. Hey everybody, it's me, Gator. I know that was terrible. <laughs> welcome to another That's edition just the of the theater kid on the podcast. <laughs> Shut up, Spooky. <laughs> it's your boy Gator here for another edition of the Anime Boomer Podcast. This time we're talking about Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, we're going to split this one up into two parts because there's so much Hedgehog that there's just too much to talk about. Let me... And we'll listen to the real man himself. We'll listen to just how the man sounds. Slenderman's kind of an overdone thing on the internet. You know, why do a movie about Slenderman? And the reason that I chose this particular topic is because I wanted to kind of delve into the idea that, you know, perhaps the belief of something supernatural can make it real and you know it's a theme played up by Neil Gaiman and American Gods that you know both good and evil entities gain power by people believing that they're real do all of the gym personators in private do they all sound like Kermit the Frog does Carl sound like this 
Does Fagmenko sound like this? Does Jesse sound like this? Does Saturate, do they all sound just like this? And so, you know, with the internet and access to all this information and people making stuff up, you know, perhaps though people start to believe the stuff that they read on the internet. Now I want to ask you all. Oh, we're going to have a lot of fun with this one. I want to ask you all. The man you've seen, the real face of the man. Does that look to you like a man who slays pussy on the nightly? Does that look to you like a man who's slamming hoes, sowing his wild oats? Does this look to you like a man who in any way, shape or form has been anywhere near a vagina. But what about... <laughs> what about this here? Does this look to you like a man who's been anywhere near a vagina that wasn't drawn? Now this is his sister, and I think this this is the closest the guy's ever got to a female. Why is Goblinson asking this? This clearly so obvious to answer question. Of course not. Of course this man's never been near a poo. This guy's never touched a crumb of pussy, let alone had a Puerto Rican girlfriend, several Puerto Rican girlfriends, that he's lied about over the years. Where, what, what, what? Surely this man, this man doesn't have the gall, the shame, Surely he's not shameless enough to lie about such a thing as that. You'd be wrong. You would be incredibly wrong. Because, bizarrely, and everyone knew it was bullshit at the time, but all we had to do was make do with a gator in a luchador mask. And it was kind of like a Schrodinger's cat of whether or not Gator could actually slam pussy on the nightly when he was, uh, I don't know, away from the kill stream. <laughs> this is savage. This is savage. This might be the most brutal takedown of another man on the internet that you've seen in a long time. But I think Gator deserves it, don't you? I think this man fucking deserves everything he gets. I've had to put up with this man for fucking years. Pretending to be a chap. Pretending to be a king. Pretending to be something he's just absolutely not. This man has never been anywhere near the person he pretends himself to be. I've got to stop Despacito. While we listen to Gator shamelessly lie yet again. What was the craziest blonde you dated, Gator? Now, already we are 0.04 seconds in. Dirk must, Dick Masterson's asked a question that he's not even convinced of. He's so half-hearted in his answer, asking of this question that not even he believes that he's asking this. What was the craziest blonde you ever dated, Gator? And he, he reads the question like, holy shit, 
I can't believe we're doing this one. But you'll listen to his lies. What was the craziest blonde you dated, Gator? Oh boy, uh, she was part Puerto Rican. I'll just leave off of that. What does that mean? What does that mean? Uh, <laughs> have you ever dated? Have you ever dated a girl uh, that, that that's of Puerto Rican descent or a Puerto Rican mix? No. So uh, let me let me describe it. So they it's talk like about their their country wanting to be a state a lot or something like that. What is the no is Puerto Rican girl like? There's just. There, there's something about Puerto Rican women that just, they're, they're really nice and you have a great time, but then it's just kind of like you're sitting there one day and somebody walked over and flipped the switch from loving to murder bot 5,000 and <laughs> they are just in there yelling and you don't even know what they're yelling. You're just kind of like, am I about to get stabbed right now? What's happening? Oh, I see. Yeah. It just, uh, they just turn, they turn on you. Like a pit bull, they just turn. I think that might be all Latino women, not just Puerto Ricans. That might be, Bullshit. that might be, that problem might be bigger than you think it is. Bullshit. Well, it made it worse because she was my first college girlfriend and, ooh, boy, I, what would she do? Throw shit? Well, the, the story, I, so I was playing, I was playing video games. I want to say it was Halo Reach at the time. And she got super pissed off for no reason. Just because I was playing I was playing Halo Reach instead of doing something like mundane. I can't remember what it was. I, I like didn't take the trash out or something. And she was just fucking throwing shit at me from across the room. I'm just like, what the fuck? Just like screaming at the top of her lungs. Like, like what the fuck? Uh. And then I, I kid you not. But like three hours later, like she, I, I go into my room and she follows in after me and she just 100% just wants to fuck like out of nowhere. And I, I was confused. I was completely like, like, how did this change? Fucking from, shameless. You, know, you want me to die to now you want to fuck me to death. You never know. Now you want to fuck me to death. Is that what you're saying, Gator? No, you never know. You never know. Put Puerto Rican. Fake Puerto Rican girlfriend. Now you might think, oh, that sounds familiar. We've just had another fake fiance in the mix, haven't we, with Fagmenko? It seems to be a common theme with these gym personators. They all invent a love life. They all add weird details into, like, I think I was playing Halo Reach at the time. What an unnecessary detail to prove that you're lying. I want to ask you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one for absolutely fucking not, two for, by God, believe his lies. Is Gator, this man I'm about to show you right now, is this a man who was abused by his Puerto Rican girlfriend? Is this a man whose Puerto Rican girlfriend said, let's fuck? This man. And it starts to make some of the things... Oh, boy. ...ridiculous things... Whoa, damn. ...come to life. So that was kind of the concept I worked with. It's an infinity of ones. And then the concept of the movie inside a movie... No one's believing the man's the lies. Movie, the filming of the movie for the movie contest was just... Someone like, says no. No. Uh, a million times no. Fun. Originally, the project was going to be a kind of campy, uh, poking fun at the silly horror genre and what it's kind of become uh, using the Slender Man character because it's public domain and because it was created on the internet, nobody owns uh, the Slender Man character. Uh, you know, using a character like that to. When this first came out, by the way, Gator denied that this was him. People, Gator's fan base, were shocked they didn't sound like Jim in real life. And Gator tried to capitalise on that and say that that wasn't him. But I've checked the eyes, bro. I've checked them eyes. Um, the man has spent nigh on a decade sweeping 
for his lords and masters. He's currently sweeping for Daddy Jim because Daddy Jim's dead. And there's an ulterior motive behind it. Because he wants to be Jim. He's actually been trying to sweep it for his friend, Fagmenko. You might deny that he, he, and he will eventually deny that he was ever friendly with Fagmenko, that he ever brought him on the kill stream, that he ever made him in any way relevant, that he ever did shows with him on the gate of time, and that he ever fucking, he lit, the guy literally, before even the Kino Casino, he runs to Fagmenko's show when Fagmenko was king of the sector. I'll never forget the sector, forget that sin. And he talks about how he was the talent. He brought all of the talent to Ralph's show. And without any shame, isn't challenged on any of that. He talks about how he... I mean, listen. Somebody, somebody that was that, like I don't like would, would like would run gay about up or something, or yeah, would I'm bitch sure. about me, and I'm just like, oh yeah, well fuck you. I mean, I'm gonna stay with the guns. Like, fuck you. I'm gonna stay with the gun. You're all gay ops. I'm running to Daddy Fagmenko. The man has a very poor choice in masters, doesn't he? Not only have we got him running to Fagmenko. But running to fuck... I mean, listen, listen to when he ran to fucking... Ralph is the kind of person that, like... He gives out little hints that, he, that he's not pleased with what you've done. That he's not happy with uh, something that you've said done. And, you know, it's, it's a little, it was a little frightening back then. Okay. Because, you know, I was still in that mode of, oh no, you know, what if... You know, what if he ruins my life? What if he fucks with me? Yeah, so I, I just kind of told yeah, the line. Yeah. Whatever he would say, I would just echo like a return. What if he ruins my life? What if he fucks with me? Well, maybe in in the dark, Shannon, you don't you don't do degenerate things like dress as Jim, go to anime conventions, point at murals of children, and say that they're your waifu. Maybe you don't do degenerate shit like this. Maybe. You stand by your own convictions, confident in the fact that no matter what comes out from your private life, there's nothing to be ashamed of. But alas, alas, the man has spent nine a decade. I mean... <laughs> Stop, you're under arrest. This is what he was doing. Like a fucking schizophrenic split personality. This is what he was doing on Twitch. In secret. You know, the man was afraid that Ralph would dox this. Who gave a fuck? No one gave a fuck. It was only when you started talking smack, saying that everyone was like a gay ops, because you're insane. Because you genuinely do have some sort of mental illness where you can switch on the gym and the Kermit the Frog th thing like that. This is you. This is what you're ashamed of. This is why you pretend to be something else online. A more serious. And it's still got its campy moments. The television show that we kind of parodied a little bit for this was... Beyond belief, fact, or fiction with Jonathan Frakes, because all of us are huge. This uh, Star Trek Next Generation is you. It's Gator Time in the Anime Boomers podcast. What's he looking at here? What is this? What's Godwinson got in front of him? I'm about to show you how he thinks he should be treated on the internet. And just how people treat him on the internet. When we get past this advert for Flora Butter. This is the man. And this is what he thinks. Gator time. Anime Boomers podcast. It's the Patreon. You can select a membership level. One pound a month. 
The basic level if you want me and the crew to support what we're doing, but on a budget. Okay, it includes... includes Discord benefits. Five pounds a month, you get access to any bonus content produced by the show. Access to live chats, community nights, a special voicemail number when you can call in and leave me a message. You can send Gator a voicemail for five pounds a month. The ego of the man. For this one, for nine pounds fifty a month, all of these plus VAT, by the way. All previous, all this previous garbage. You'll be able to watch podcast episodes being recorded live. And you'll receive a credit in the video description. That's it. That's fucking it. Now, the question is, who the fuck? What brain-dead motherfucker has gone and pressed, yes, sign me up for a monthly direct debit to Gator's Patreon? Bizarre, and even I'm shocked at this number, because it really should be naught. Bizarrely, six people, six brain-dead motherfuckers, six people with the IQ that's at least ten digits below Mama JF's. These six people are less intelligent than Andy Worski. And even though the combined efforts, six people, the combined efforts of six people, not one of, it doesn't seem like any of them, none of them have gone for any of the other tiers. The combined efforts of 16, of six people can barely even rake in the man 16 pounds a month. 16 pounds a month is what the man subsisted with. It's been a long time. Kept you waiting, huh? Welcome to the updated petition edition of the Patreon. Over the next couple of days, I'll be editing the tiers memberships and such to be in line with what will be offered on the YouTube membership page. Do you want to see what his goal is to survive each month? The man asks for nothing, really. But he can't even get scraps. He wants £41. He's not even halfway. He wants the £41 so he can devote more time into producing content and making shows. I will invest this into making the show better. I think the only way that... Your investment can make Gator's show better is if he spends the Patreon donos on a gun and a bullet for him to eat. Ain't that right, folks? But you, you can become a Patreon today to unlock 11 exclusive posts, be a part of his paedophile community, listen to his fake voice anywhere, and connect to him via a private message. You know what makes me laugh? Every time I see Gator rag on Ralph, a man he literally swept it up for for so long. It, it still makes me laugh to read a post from Rage Pig Ethan Ralph going full mundane Matt and flagging people down, laughing at him. Rage Pig Ethan Ralph. Bro. You swept it up for that rage pig for a good 10 years. You weren't just doing this naively without anyone telling you what was going on. You had ample opportunity to leave. But you didn't. You did so at the orders of Jim. 
Because you go around dressing like Jim in public. You go around to these anime conventions, handing out four-star hats. The man, Jim, dictates your every thought and whim. But because Jim disavowed, that was the final straw. That's why you disavowed. Except, you'd have been better staying with Ralph. Because no one likes a fucking traitor. And no one's going to like you, Shannon. No matter how much money is invested into that Patreon to make your show better. Because ultimately, they'd have to change the person that the show is. They'd have to change the very gator himself. They'd have to change this man. Now, you, at the top of the show, we showed you Gator's thoughts on doxing, right? Uh, in fact, I might even remind you. I might even remind you of what he used to say about how doxing was awesome. Listen to his voice. Doxing is a tool. Like any other tool, it can be used for good and it can be used for awesome. Okay, Gator's thoughts on doxing. But this is the image he tries to... He swept that one up. He swept up his history on that one. And this is what he, uh, this is what he says now. How about no? Discourse isn't improved when people can swat you or call you up or your employer. This is one of the worst takes you've had so far, which is saying something. Doxing can, use, can be used for good or it can be used for awesome. Gator, can you not? But you know why he changed his position on doxing? Do you want to know why he changed his position on doxing? It's simply because Jim got doxed and his dox got hosted on Kiwi Farms. And that's why he went in at Josh as well. But don't take my word for it. Take this fool's words for it. Nah, I said to his face that trying to dox Jim was gay, and he's held a grudge against Ralph and us ever since that stream. So doxing is all right for other people, for all of the people used to send the plate gang back. You know, go forth and dox. That's what you used to say when you were in the Ralph Discord, when they were Ralph's capos. But because Jim, Jim got doxed, then it became gay. Someone's just said that doxing Jim was awesome too. <sighs> yeah, let's 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 do the let's do his subreddit, shall we? Let's do Gator's Reddit account. I, I'm no half measuring this one. This is how we've managed to find everything, by the way. Captain Steelbeard is what he used to call himself. Here he is. That valuable time that he talked about on his Patreon, that valuable time the man's got where he can't be online and invest effort into his content, that valuable time is being spent discussing the philosophical comings and goings of Mysterio from the new Spider-Man movie. I think Mysterio is lying about his... Who gives a fuck? This guy has thought about the upcoming Spider-Man movie script in such great detail that he's formulating such bizarre thoughts that no one gives a shit about and posting them all over Reddit. He's about to answer someone's question about W.O.T., whatever the fuck that is. He says it's spoilery for the end of the series. If, if you, he ha so if you haven't read up to the last three books, I mean, it must be a challenge for Gator to read a book with his swivel eyes going on. I imagine it took him a long time to read tho those three books. But there he is posting spoilers and all that shit. 
Captain Steelbeard? Oh, he's only posted a few times. Goldmanson, he hasn't got trophies on Reddit. Say it ain't so. Tell me the man ain't got trophies on Reddit. Captain Steelbeard. 827 posts. The man spent a fucking lifetime on Reddit. Which says it all, really. But he's got some trophies there. He's got four-year club. He's got sequence editor. He's verified his email. And he's got sequence cinematographer. And I imagine there's more in his trophy case as well. There's more in his trophy case as well. Reddit's top sweeper, I imagine, is his most prized accolade. If you're going to LARP and pretend to be a cool kid on the internet, Gator, you don't have trophies on Reddit. That's not something you do, bro. But he ain't learned that yet. He ain't learned these lessons yet. Because he thinks if he just pretends to be Jim and tries to fit in with the cool kids, then people will accept him as a cool kid. Gator certainly wasn't writing this in 2020, at the height of Ralph's drama. I think even, I think the time that this was written, May 20, 20, May 2020, is when sex tape, just prior to the sex tape. But this is what Gator was writing. And he's, you know, look, it's by Captain Steelbeard, Brian Holloman, Shannon Gaines. I was used to getting picked on in, uh, in school for being an autist, is what this paragraph says. I didn't really fit in with the cool kids. Moreover, they saw through my ruse, and it made them dislike me even more. Events that have happened are happening now. Plus a charge, nothing has changed. The more things change, in fact, the more they stay the same. I talked to my father about it all the time about how frustrated I was with the whole situation. And he told me that one day, all of the stuff that they love and adore will be looked upon as really stupid, and the geeks will inherit the culture. I'm sorry, Shannon. You ain't inheriting Jim's legacy. You ain't inheriting my culture. You ain't inheriting any single crumb of this sector. Your dad was lying to you. Your dad knew he was lying to you when you were on his lap there crying like a bitch. He explained to me that the popular culture works in a cycle and things that today are really awesome will one day be looked down upon. He gave me the example of the box of pogs in my closet upstairs, how cool they were and how nobody cares about them anymore. Life's just a box of pox. That day arrived in high school. I met so many friends that shared the same interests as me, and everyone thought that we were awesome for being so into comic books, video games and autism. It was a really shocking experience to go from being the outcast to suddenly being looked upon for having this almost encyclopedic knowledge of Final Fantasy and Star Wars. Even Gate is a basic bitch nerd. Even Gate is a basic bitch loser. Oh, bruh, have you heard about, have you heard about Yoda? Of course I've heard about Yoda. Have you heard about Boba Fett? Yeah. Yes. And an almost encyclopedic knowledge of Star Wars. With the Avengers and the Dark Knight Rises being such huge successes and the rise of casual gaming, never has there been more support for what I consider the geek culture. More autism. More nonsense. 
This is his gator, this is his origin story. It is imaginative minds from which the future blossoms. He wrote that in 2020. The gator will inherit the earth. It's his four-star cap now. This is how the man thinks. Nero, this was when Milo was on Twitter, at Nero. Nero is my hero. Milo Yiannopoulos is Gator's hero. He didn't have the courage to say that on the Gator time, by the way. It's from his real account. Shannon G. S. Gaines. One like. One retweet, even. And he wrote that at the dead of night. He wrote that one at 11 p.m. at night. Milo is my hero. What was he doing in that? What was he doing while he was writing that tweet? What was he doing while he was writing that tweet, ladies and gentlemen? Fucking disgraceful. Domino's is doing its contest against. It's, it's a Gator Live news alert. Stop the presses. Domino's is doing its contest again, where you can eat, win a free year of pizza. And you better believe that every year. And he retweets it himself, by the way. You better believe he does it every year for that free year's worth supply of pizza. I'm just going to go for the kill on this one. There's Ethan Ralph's first child mother and Gator. Spot the difference. Spot the difference. Spot the difference. I, I see no difference. I see no difference. <laughs> fuck was that? What the fuck was that? Couldn't hurt. I didn't mean to say this for a while. Punch it. Thought you'd never say <laughs> But Gator's gonna sit there Go to class. and tell me that he's more talented, that he's more of a showman. He's gonna sit there and say that anyone who criticizes him is jealous, is jealous of him. Yikes. 
Shannon Gaines. <laughs> There's so much on Shannon that he swept up when he defected that it actually hurts me. It actually hurts me that this is what we're into. But because he's so ardent at Ralph now, he thinks that everyone's forgotten what he used to do. Because he's posting tweets like this, I hope the baby is born healthy and happy. And Ralph is late to see the magic happen because he's a shithead. Bro, he wasn't a shithead for 10 years when he was doing more heinous things than he is now. When you were at his side sweeping it up for him. Now, we have to thank Ethan Ralph for this. Because had Gator not have snaked to Pegmenko, the pedophile, Ralph wouldn't have doxed the guy. Wouldn't have told us who he actually is. But Ralph was just abiding by Gator's own words. Where doxing is good and awesome. And so Ralph showed zero remorse. So that's what Ralph made when he doxed Gator, when Gator snaked. And I can't think of a more fitting capstone to Gator's time on the internet than Ralph screaming, I'm coming home. My arrival is imminent. And, and Gator obviously with this, by the way, when we hear his copes to fag Menko in the Kino Casino, and he says he was afraid of this hap. He was afraid that Ralph was just going to dox him and drop all of the shit. And that's why he stayed loyal for 10 years. Gator's ultimate nightmare was this very clip. Was this. Was this happening. That's what Gator used to have nightmares about. And Ralph knew it. And that's why Ralph doxed Gator in such a showmanship way. And also, no one really gave a fuck about Gator being doxed. No one gave a fuck. No one gave a fuck because it's taken until at least, what, what, what are we on? The 11th of January, 2023. A full six, eight months since, Ga since all this came out, since Gator snaked. And no one's picked it up. Because Gator's such an irrelevant fuck that no one cared. But I care, Gator. And I'm going to read the bio you've got on your Reddit. Captain Steelbeard. Award-winning student filmmaker. This is Rich. Internet superhero. Internet superhero. Pirate overlord. I play games and shout at my TV. Gifts on behalf of Captain Steelbeard have helped pay for 231.26 minutes of Reddit server time. Seven Year Club. I bought a fox head medallion many moons ago. I still cherish it to this day. Don't do things in the dark that you'll be ashamed about, Gator. 
And then don't make alliances to try and troll shield yourself, man. If what you're doing in private is some sick degenerate shit, then it probably is best for you not to... I'm just putting the charger in because we're running low on battery. It probably is best, Gator, not to pretend to be a dark lord of the internet. Not to try and claim Jim's legacy. Because just like Fagmenko, you'll experience a very, very, very horrific downfall. And I don't think you'll be able to take it, buddy. I certainly don't think you'll be able to take what you've got. Now, <clears throat> I was in two minds over this one. I was in two minds about going into this one. But if we're truly following the central tenet of the Kino Dogma 2007, then I have to say no half measures, and I have to live by those rules. So that's why now I'm about to A-log Gator's sister. Shannon's sister's on the menu. Do you want to see what Shannon's sister is writing? Shannon's sister wants to get fucked by a deer. By, by an animal. A deer. Shannon's sister wants to get fucked by a four-legged deer. This is what she... Um, you, you can check the record. This is what she's writing on her slash, slash fictions, whatever you want to call it. In fact, it might be apt to line something up for this. <laughs> Enjoy plus 500's it's Keitha Sutherland trying to get me to gamble. A plus. It's my song, this one. Yeah, I know there's, there's morality in this, but no half measures. We're going for his sister. She writes, You're breathtaking, my dear. Alice Storr breathed, kissing my body and moving lower. And so wet. I felt him kiss between my legs and I gasped. Just that small touch sent waves of pleasure through my body. I wanted more. And as if he was reading my mind, Alistair began to lick my already sensitive clit. I was more sensitive than normal. Had it have been the hooker, he made sure to apply plenty of pressure when he licked me in long strokes. Do you know why they were long strokes, ladies and gentlemen? Because Alistair is a deer. Is a fucking deer. And the touch of his tongue lingered after each stroke. It felt so good. I moaned a breathy moan and noticed his hand had released my wrist and I grabbed Alistair I grabbed Alastor by his antlers. And ran my hands through his silken crimson hair. He finally settled on a spot and, and began to suck my clit. It felt so amazing. I began moaning his name softly as he continued his assault on my womanhood. So the whole family's fucked, isn't it? The whole family is just degenerate after degenerate. She wrote this. She wants to get fucked by a deer. Gator's sister. No half measures.
Sometimes I feel like I shouldn't bother anymore. Ralph doing fucked up things story time, because inevitably, some colossal faggot will take it as Gator knew about everything the whole time. And to the gunt, guarding for so long, well, you try knowing a fat, deranged, alcoholic faggot could have dumped your personal info and destroyed your life at any moment he wanted. If you can't handle the heat, Gator, get out of the kitchen. To the top, if you want to rock and roll, buddy. If your sister's writing smut like that, if you're going to anime conventions dressed as Metica, if you're writing crying blogs about how you're bullied at school, and you're afraid of that being brought to the light, I mean, I can do the pine cone shit if you want me to. Shall we rhyme it with the pine cone shit? So, if you don't know, you should know. In Knoxville, Andy Worski fucked a pine cone. Um, by that, I mean he fucked a fat pig who shoves pine cones up her ass. She's got an OnlyFans now, and it's disgusting. But Andy Worski slammed that. I think even Coach had a go. Even Coach had a go. But you know who didn't get a go? Because it's Shannon Gaines. Shannon didn't get a go. And this is her telling the story. Oh, you're friends with Kirsten. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, hey, can you, can you ask her if she likes me? And I'm like, huh. like, I mean, you can like DM her yourself, you know? Yeah. Like, you, yeah you this got... is the funniest part. It's like all these fucking people that were insulting her are on the fucking slap being like, Yo, can I slide up in your DMs, though? Yeah. Well, you know... Ha, 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 pinecone girl! But seriously, you won't fuck, though? Huh? That's, a little, that's a little disingenuous, you know? It's like, you know, why would you why would you do that? That's so that's so gay, you know? Exactly. Well, there, there's all these fucking all these fucking nerds that are trying to, like, pretend they're fucking chads on the internet. They're going around and just, like, publicly because it's cool. They're like, ah, ha, ha, let's make fun of this chick and then slide up into her DMs. All these fucking nerds. It's all quiet, like. Yeah. All these, all these fucking nerds. <laughs> all, all these, all these fucking nerds just, uh. They, they, they're trying to be chats. They're, they don't have what it takes to be... To be... Slayer of Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican poon like Gator. All these fucking nerds. But they're all sliding up in her DMs. And, about what people think about you on the internet it's just going to consume you and who you are and you'll always be trying to like always be trying to please them and go against yourself and who you are uh, i've been trying to tell her that it doesn't matter what people say about her you know just be true to ignore the haters don't pay attention to cow don't pay attention to the dumb shit that andy's saying just be yourself you know and everything else will take care of itself just be yourself me lady either like you or they my want. dear you're a decent person, I'll like you. Exactly. You and, your friends are following. And if the haters don't like you, then fuck the haters, honestly. Like, because a lot of these people, that they, they hate everyone. And they hate everyone and they want to destroy everyone, so you're never going to please them. So why? Why try? Exactly. Sadly, Gator. Gator couldn't get a crumb of Kirsten's pussy. The pine cone. Gator couldn't, didn't have the, coach did, by the way, but, but Gator couldn't get any. 
I'm trying to find its OnlyFans, but thank God I can't. Because I want to be able to sleep tonight and not be haunted by nightmares. But you better believe that this OnlyFans is being paid for by Shannon. Shannon's bankrolling that OnlyFans because he's the only subscriber to it. It's tough. Me dear. Me lady. Gator couldn't even pull the pine cone. That's fucked. <clears throat> Question, how many times has Gator masturbated to those streams of Jade where she's licking the lollipop Jim's wife? I think he's doing it right now, don't we, ladies and gentlemen? I think he's doing it as we speak. Me dear, me lady. It's tough. It's fucking tough. I'm going to bookend us as we take us out. Why he likes elf chicks so much? Because I'm going to leave us with food for thought. This is my moment of zen. I'm going to leave us with just a little thought to ruminate in our heads in light of recent events. Because we're all aware of the Fagmenko meltdown, the collapse that the man has had. We're all aware of how he was king of the sector. Love a bit of sound. When you become an experience, I hate sand. You can instantly stop. We're all aware. We're all aware of the meltdown that Fagmenko has had. What he's been going through. How all of the dirt's come out, the boy soprano shit. All of the pedo shit. His antics and actions for a decade. Him running SPC out of town and all of this shit. Gator was afraid of Ralph for, for, for one reason. And that reason he openly tells you is because Ralph could reveal everything. Ralph had the ability to tell us all just who Gator really is. And when the man's going to anime conventions dressed as Jim, and he's pointing at murals of elf girls, of children, saying that they're his wife. It makes me wonder, what's on that hard drive, buddy? What are you so afraid of? Why is it that all of these heirs to Jim, these Jim skinwalkers, these Jim personators, why do they all have very degenerate pasts? Why are they still engaging in that degeneracy? Why do they all seem to have elf girl waffles? So my moment of zen my thought for the day is a question. One for yes, two for no. Is Shannon Gaines a paedophile? Is Shannon Gaines a paedophile?
I've not seen one two, by the way. Not seen a single two. <laughs> not seen a single two. Um, but, you know, it's, it's Gay Op Swinson again. It's Gay Op Swinson, you know. Um, every time we'd come at Gator, the guy would put my dick in his mouth and say that I've always been a fan of Goblinson. He used to put out good content, but you can't take someone seriously when they have a trust fund and whine about money. Oh. I can't take someone seriously who wanks off to children. Um, there we go, Gator. You know, I hope you can recover from your slit throat. If not, 